It's the rule of nerds. And this is our Game of Thrones refresher course. Here we go. Has it been too long since the season six finale? Have you not had the time to do a rewatch? So are you worried that by the time season seven comes along, you will be completely lost? So do not worry because we here at The Rule of Nerds have got you covered. So when we last left Game of Thrones, Jon Snow was already crowned King of the North, Cersei Lannister was now sitting on the Iron Throne, and Daenerys Targaryen is now sailing to Westeros with a lot of new allies. So promotional material for Season 7 puts the focus on these three leaders and also this upcoming thing called the Great War. Now, as you can see, all of our all of the characters that we know and love are starting to consolidate into alliances where once they were all scattered and had their own things going, you know things are getting real because you can see that at some point in the near future, they're all going to be in one spot. All right, so basically, based on the, the trailer that we had, we had three leaders, you know, three general factions. You had Cersei Lannister, you had Daenerys Targaryen, and you had Jon Snow. So, just to give you the recap, we will uh, try to see um, where the three leaders are and who are the ones allied with them. So, of course, we'll start off with Cersei Lannister. So, like we said, Cersei is the one currently sitting on the Iron Throne. For most of season six, she had been quarreling with the church and the high sparrow, and also with the younger queen that she had been uh, so at odds with, Marjorie Tyrell. But at the end of last season, she solved all of those problems by <laughs> blowing up the sept in King's Landing. And now she is uh, basically, she doesn't have any more enemies within King's Landing, yeah. but she has a lot of enemies outside. Now, in her inner core group, of course, she has. Uh, Kyburn, her yes. mad scientist. She has her Frankenstein's monster in uh, the former Sir Gregor Clegane, now known as Sir Robert Strong. And uh, of course, she has her brother, her twin brother, Jamie Lannister, there. Although the question will be is Jamie on her side? Right. Now, she, she will have some armies that will be under her control. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as the Queen of the Iron Throne, she will have control of the armies of King's Landing and also the full support of the Lannister armies. House Lannister will be behind her. So the big conflict here will be, uh, we know that Daenerys is coming, and we know that Daenerys is coming specifically for the Iron Throne. Right. So that's going to be one of the, the big talking points we're going to see on Team Cersei, but also again, like like we said, uh, Jamie is there. But if you remember, Jamie was uh, was out doing a mission when the the big explosion happened in King's Landing, and uh, he seemed pretty bummed about the aftermath of that. Not only Cersei going full Mad Queen, mm -hmm. but also the result of that, which was you know uh, their son uh, King Tommen taking a walk outside the window. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, so now let's talk about Team Daenerys. So basically, who is on her side? Of course, primarily you have Tyrion, who is like now sort of like her, her right-hand man who whispers into her ear. Hand of the Queen. Hand of the Queen. And um, he sort of like in, in some ways uh, helped um, usher in the whole charging off to Westeros. And of course, you also have Varys who's never really on anyone's side, but for now, she is on, I mean, he is on Daenerys' side. We also have, of course, Miss Ande and Grey Worm, and based on the trailer, they will be very close, uh, closer than we've seen before. Of course, they are very loyal to Daenerys ever since. There's no changing of sides going on. You just know that they're on Daenerys' side. Now, as far as the armies are concerned, you have the Unsullied, like we said, Grey Worm is there, and you have the Dothraki. Again, uh, the, this alliance has been there from way, way back. So you know that these two armies uh, are, um, you know, under Daenerys' wing. Now, new alliances. Uh, last season, we saw this meeting between the Martells and the Tyrells. And then while they were talking about an alliance against Cersei, because of all the whole blowing up thing, they lost um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of family members, uh, courtesy of Cersei. 
Varys suddenly comes out, and you know that Varys is on Daenerys' side. And then at the very end, you saw the banners of the Martells and the Tyrells among the ships. It wasn't implicitly, I mean, explicitly stated, but implicitly it was basically being suggested that they are now on one team. And um, of course, you have the Greyjoys. You have Yara and Theon, and you had this little flirtation going on when, when uh, the two um, Greyjoys went to Daenerys to convince her because against Euron, their uncle, it's like, be on our side, give us the, you know, give us um, our land back and, you know, destroy our uncle. And then they had a little, like, agreement where uh, basically Daenerys said, okay, but stop the pillaging and the raping and, you know, we'll be good. So now they're also on their side. And during the final scene, you could see that they were explicitly on a boat together with Daenerys' fleet. So you know that they're on their side. And um, the conflict, of course, you know, uh, I guess initially it will really be a Cersei versus Daenerys team, the two teams going against each other. So we'll see where that leads and we can expect the first um, conflict to be that between, I mean, the th among the three leaders or the three teams. And can I just say, this team looks stacked. This is a yeah. major, major yes. player in the fight for the Iron Throne. Right. Now, up north, Team John is, of course, led by Jon Snow. The last time that we saw him, he had just uh, won the Battle of the Bastards, reclaimed the Winterfell, and uh, he, got, he has gotten the support of all of the major northern houses, like the Manderleys, the Kerwins, the Glovers, of course, the Mormons. Now, uh, up there, by his side, of course, is his sister, Sansa. Uh, Sansa Stark, of course, brought the Knights of the Vale along uh, along with her, she, she brings the Knights of the Vale along with her and helped John win the Battle of the Bastards. Unfortunately, that also means that she brings along a, a snake yes. in uh, Littlefinger, Peter Baelish. So uh, you can expect that there to be some tension there as well. Uh, other people up there up north with John, of course, uh, Tormund, who now leads the Free Folk, who are pretty much, uh, they recognize John as a, as a leader. And also, uh, you can expect that he's still on very friendly terms with the Night's Watch. Yes. He may no longer be the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, but uh, you know he's friends with all of those guys up there. So uh, what will be the main conflict up there? Obviously, Jon has his eyes focused on the Night's King and the White Walkers. That's going to be the major focus, but you can also expect that whoever wins down south, whoever wins the Iron Throne, whatever queen comes out on top there, they're not going to be too happy with there being another king up north. So we can also expect those sides to clash sometime soon. All right. So now let's talk about the free agents. When we say free agents, there, there are two kinds. Those whose alliances we're not really sure of. And those who basically, yeah, we know whose side they're on. But as of the moment, they're sort of like floating around. So let's start off with Arya Stark. We know that she's a Stark. So she's going to be on John's side. But as for now, we don't really know where she's going because, you know, she's pretty much been on her own for the good part of the series. And the last that we saw of her was where she kills Walder Fra Frey. Frey. Yeah. You know, we, we know that uh, family ties run deep for yes. Arya. That was her whole arc when she was in Braavos. Yes. Uh, she had to give up her name, but in the end, she she's proud to be Arya Stark. Of course. Uh, but of course, the, the question we have to wonder now is uh, how, how important is Jon's cost to her right now over what has been her pretty much her, her only motivation for these past seasons, which is uh, that kill list that she yes. has, right? So she might have her own interests at this point, but mm -hmm. if she is to join a team, you can probably expect, it's probably a safe bet to join John and Sansa up in Winterfell. Right. Now, the next character we're going to talk about is Melisandra, the priestess, the red priestess, you know. So uh, the last time we saw Melisandra, of course, uh, she was with Team John. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Team Stannis, and then that kind of merged with Team John. But uh, she has been dismissed from Team John in the in the finale of uh, season six because of her action of uh, burning cute little Princess Shireen. Right. You know, uh, Davos was able to to find out, and he was not pleased about that. So uh, John cast her aside, and now she's kind of floating. 
This is one character where we don't really know where her um, alliances uh, lie because she could be anyone's uh, partner. Yeah. Uh, so this is one very important character where I think we will all be very interested to see where she will finally um, put her alliances. All right, so the next one we're going to talk about free agent will be Brienne. So I say free agent because basically we know that, you know, she's a Stark woman. You know, she's, uh, you know, she saved Sansa uh, from captivity and she seems to be floating around. And we all know this thing that goes on between uh, Brienne and Jaime. So we don't know if that will play into the story later on. Uh, but generally, we know that she's Team Stark. But it's not really clear at the end of season six. We'll just have to wait and see for season seven. Yeah, because we know that uh, she is sworn to the mother, Catelyn Stark. Yes. But uh, what, what we don't know, I, I think the last times that we, we've seen uh, Brienne, uh, she, was, uh, she was trying to get on Sansa's team, but uh, she was getting rejected, right? Yes. Uh, I, I, she tried to help Arya. She tried to help Sansa. But... Uh, She's really sworn to Catelyn, and uh, we're not sure uh, what that means now that Catelyn is actually gone, and, and her daughters don't really want Brienne on their team. Now, we've also got Bran Stark and Mira, Mira Reed, who uh, for most of season six, they were trying to make their way back to the wall uh, with Bran and, you know, the Stark's uncle, Uncle Benjen. Uh, I think near the end of season six, they were able to make it all the way back to the wall, uh, which is where Uncle Benjen tells them that uh, he can't cross the wall because uh, uh, dead things can't cross it. So there, there's magic in the wall. Uh, some interesting plot detail that might come in later. Now, uh, again, we don't know exactly where Bran is going to be. Obviously, he's a Stark, so it makes sense for him to join Jon's team. And also, his conflict has always been with the White Walkers, which means that uh, his his uh, motivations will ally with will ally pretty closely with the uh, with uh, John's team. So uh, probably a safe bet he's going to be Team John, but we need to find out. And with all the you know rumors that basically Bran uh, is going to be a huge player towards the end of the series, we're very excited to see just exactly where you know season seven will bring him, like geographically and in terms of the struggle for power, where exactly Bran will be. So very excited to see what Bran is up to for season seven. Another interesting thing about Bran uh, that I just remembered, of course, uh, we know that uh, the cave where he was at uh, had protections against the, the White Walkers. Right. And uh, because he formed this bond with the Night's King, mm -hmm. uh, those protections uh, fell apart, basically, and, right. and they were able to invade that cave. So uh, what does that mean if Bran crosses the wall and uh, and he has that connection with the Night's King? Does that mean does the White Walkers mean, can cross over? Yeah, so that, that's something we should be looking out for, in not if not in Season 7, maybe the last season. Right. And next up, we have the Hound. So last that we saw, um, you know, after the, the, the climactic battle with Brienne, he was basically like recuperating, he survived. And then of course he got into, you know, he was uh, this little community that was slaughtered by the Brotherhood, or at least some members of the Brotherhood. He got his uh, comeuppance. He was able to kill the people who um, uh, slaughtered the people who took care of him. And then he basically went with the real Real brotherhood to go after the White Walkers. So um, theirs is very, also very, very Jon Snow uh, kind of path because they're not really after any more of the Iron Throne or yeah. Westeros. They know that there's a bigger battle going on, which is basically with the White Walkers. But of course, people are still wondering if ever there will be this whole the Hound versus the Mountain still waiting somewhere down the road, whether it's season seven or the final season. So that is something we're still looking for. Clay Gain Bowl, baby! So for season seven, this is what we know, all right? We've seen some trailers already. We know some things already. So uh, let, let us lay it out for you, okay? So we know for sure that uh, Daenerys is going to be landing on Dragonstone. Uh, we've seen videos of her uh, with the gate opening in front of Dragonstone. We've seen her on the throne on Dragonstone. So that's something to look Touching forward to. Touching the ground. To. Yes. 
we also know that John is probably going to make a return to the wall or possibly beyond the wall. So the, the shots we've seen of him in the trailers, uh, very snowy, very icy, pretty much looks like beyond the wall to us. Uh, we also know that uh, there's going to be a, a big battle scene, a, a big open battle in a, in a field where you have Daenerys' forces, the Dothraki doing their uh, doing their Dothraki things, uh, standing up onto onto the horses, some some really badass stuff, uh, going up against uh, Lannister forces, and you can also see there where uh, a shot of Drogon. Yes, Drogon, much who is, bigger. Yeah, he's big AF, big <laughs> as a plane. <laughs> yeah, and also we know that there's going to be a clash inside of King's Landing. Right between the Unsullied and the Lannister forces. So we don't know which one actually happens first yes. chronologically. But we know it's, those battles are happening. Yeah. So that's what we know. What about the things that we don't know? Okay, so now what we don't know are the following. So let's start off with uh, Daenerys. Because we all know that, you know, the paths of Cersei and Jon have crossed earlier on in the season, actually first season. And, uh, but Daenerys has not really met up with any of the other two leaders. So the question is, although the forces have clashed, we don't know if Daenerys will come face to face with Cersei, with Jon, or with both in season seven. Eventually, we all know that they will basically be face to face. Some will be allied, some will be, you know, in conflict. But this season, we don't know if um, you'll see both or the three of them in one frame and actually talking to each other and having dialogue. The second point being, obviously, um, logic tells us that probably the first battle will be between Daenerys and Cersei. And then whoever wins in that battle, like a round robin thing, will be going up against Jon Snow. Of course, we don't know that. It's just a, a, logic, uh, a logical um, guess that we're thinking that there will be a battle first in King's Landing before there's going to be a battle with Jon Snow. Now, we don't know if it's going to happen, but this is probably what will happen. Now, third, we are still, of course, wondering, even the, the magazines are showing us group shots, will there be a Stark reunion? So we all want to see all of them together. We want to see Jon, we want to see Sansa, we want to see Arya, we want to see Bran all together, but we don't know that. Maybe there will be more Starks together, but will it be complete? We'll find out later on. Do you mean we're going to see Rob and Rick? <laughs> Maybe except them, but the living Starks, we don't know if they will actually be in one frame. So basically, uh, and um, the last one that we don't really know, we know that we've seen certain scenes uh, of White Walkers, but we don't know just how much White Walker action we will see for Season 7. Will the people over at Westeros actually realize just how big um, the danger is? Uh, something that Jon Snow has known for a long time already, but hasn't really relayed to the rest of the world. Uh, so how much action will we see with White Walkers? We don't know. So that's it for our refresher on Game of Thrones. Uh, let us know in the comment section what are the things that you want to see in Season 7. You know, we all have our, our things we're looking forward to. I want to see the Stark reunion. Right. I want to see Clay Gain Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, Chico probably wants to see some other things as well. But we want to know what you guys think. And even like theories, just put everything in the comment section. And of course, we'd like to invite everybody to please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Rule of Nerds. Click, please. And uh, you can also check out our social media accounts. It's The Rule of Nerds on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Now for our personal accounts, you can check me out on my social media accounts. That's Chico Garcia, at Chico Garcia, over at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And I'm M underscore Volante on Twitter and JM underscore Volante on Instagram. Nerds, Nerds out! out. Here, here, here we go! <laughs>